Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Oliver Ames High School, home of the 2017 Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. And right now it's game four, the Brockton Boxers and the Oliver Ames Tigers. We talk about 15 rounds in the heavyweight division, Rocky Marciano style. This game is it. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, big game. Calls for a big time substitution, Brett Gormley in, Nubi Rato out. <laughs> Brett, this is going to be a good matchup. Ooh. Yes, it is. Uh, Brockton is very long, very athletic. And you're seeing that right away as they're getting the ball into Terry early. Abu Kaba is fouled on his way in. It will be an inbounding foul. This should be an interesting matchup as uh, OA doesn't look that big. So this is game four of four tonight, four of eight overall in this tournament. Last matchup, Cardinal Spellman versus South Boston. That was a good game. The unofficial count, there was about 67 fouls in that game. Wow. Between the two teams. Terry skying over everybody for that rebound. Well, that's Brockton's weakness. I've seen them play three times now. Outside shooting is not a strength of this team. And when you can do things like that, it really makes up for it. Jerry Harris off the glass and in. First nice field finish. goal converted for either side. Three nothing boxers. Boxers are down there starting point guard Junior Montero tonight. Montero is in concussion protocol. Will be available Friday. Now he played a full season of football. I don't think he had any concussion issues then. Down low to Terry. for Terry, spinning off the glass and in. Great fake to the middle, right to the double team, throws the defense, up and in. Brockton's going small to, to start the game. Usually Sonny Okanola or Abu Kaba all the way Durie in, lays it up. Lost control of it midair, but able to adjust and lay it in with his wrist. Cobb is a very strong player going to the hoop. The Boxers coming in at five and oh, two of those wins against Barnstable High, one by 31 and one by 50. That first game of the season was very impressive. One of them upset I did not get to watch the road game against BC High, 55-53 final in that one. Nice high low there Terry in the dunk. Terry with a strong flush. And a timeout called by head coach Don Byron of the Olive Rams Tigers, 9-2. Eldon Terry with four points. And then two of those coming on a dunk. Terry sending a message very early. This is his game. It's his paint. And he's going to do whatever he wants. Eldon Terry, the 6'7 junior. Listed as a pure center. You can see why. Towering over everybody. He is at least three inches taller than everybody else on the roster, save for Tejan Glendari. You don't see a lot of high school teams that only have one player under six feet tall. <laughs> this is probably the biggest team I've seen at Brockton High. Coach Bowen said 35 this, is, years. this is the biggest team he's had at least in the last decade. Yeah, he's been he's been at Brockton High since 1985, I believe. And his first year, I believe, was the state championship year. But they had a very large team. But it was mostly, the average was up because Curtis Jackson was 6'10". This is Azor and Harris now driving baseline to Terry. Spinning, shooting, and it's in. Nice dish there by Azor. Oh, that was Harris. So this is the thing that Brockton's just outmatched everybody as Abu Kaba comes in, up with the steal. Loses it out of play off of Brockton, they're gonna roll. But Brockton's bench is as good, if not equal field, if not some of them better than the starters. They don't lose much when they go to the bench. 
And Coach Bowen plays everybody. <coughs> this is, I've seen them play three times. I think this is the third starting lineup I've seen. Uh, and they're undefeated. So it's a very versatile group. We've got a lot of tall guys, but they're very athletic. They can handle the ball pretty well. They can shoot pretty well, too. Might see another dunk here from Terry. Block for Terry and can't get the loose ball. As number 22 of the Tigers, Ethan Ekstrom, went crashing into the end boards. Layup attempt, no good. Bouncing to Azor. Azor, one of the two under six feet. Nice finish there. Right, he's at six feet even. Marquis Dos Santos, 5'10", and Juris Harris, 5'9". The two boxers. Oh, I missed one. Under that benchmark. Marquis Dos Santos is also a track athlete. Pretty good long jumper in the spring. These are two of two. It is 14 to two. Boxers on top. This is number 10, Chris Pearsons, the junior. Three-point attempt, no good. Two boxers fighting for it. It bounces to a Tiger off the glass and in was Pearsons. That's what you don't want if you coach Bowen. You want your guys communicating out there on the glass. worth noting. Brockton is wearing their away black jerseys, white stripe down the side and red trim around the white numbers. As Terry goes in and lays it up but has fouled all of her aims. He's wearing their home whites with the orange tiger paw on the shorts and black trim around the orange letters. Another missed opportunity there for Terry. If he, if he didn't strong. windmill, if he just went straight up. Yep. He's getting a little cute. Entirely new backcourt here for Brockton. Dos Santos and Samuel Darius into the game. Tayshawn Darty Glenn checking in. Looks like for Eldon Terry. We go 6-7. Oh. Checking in for Cobb. For yep, checking in for Terry. You replace 6-7 with 6-6. Not bad. It's a luxury. You said it, not losing much. Nope. Well, you're probably getting a little bit more of a skilled offensive player in Doherty. The three for number 13 is good. Jack Spillane, the senior captain. Oh, will shoot the ball well. That's that's a trademark of Tiger basketball. Dos Santos for three, no good. Over the back. Brockton's getting outworked. Always doing a nice job of boxing out, going after the ball. Pretty decently sized fan section here at Oliver Ames. Well organized fan section. Probably always have it easy F, not easy F, staff in Brockton. It's so big, the fans are spread out. We don't have a fan section. Another three, this one no good. Brought down one handed by Darius. Darius to Jalen Lee. Lee down low, no good. Uncontested rebound for Pearsons. Away again, doing a nice job boxing out. Three is good. Number 13, Spillane over to Jean Lindardi. Now out of play, but it will remain a box of basketball. Brockton is not playing with a high level of intensity right now. OA is. Jalen Lee for three, no good. Abu Kaba looking over the back. Not boxing out. Away again, Push. doing a nice job there. With four white jerseys. Right in the paint. Brockton's up 15 to 10. OA is pressuring. Just 
communication there on defense for Brockton. Spillane missing a three is now two or three beyond the arc. Kickball called against away. Marshall Louis Charles in for Jalen Lee. Brockton's first holiday tournament on the road in what seems like ever. I would say close to 30 years. A three for Darius is good. The Rotary Holiday Tournament always held at Brockton High for teams. Well, apparently there was a the lack boxers. of interest this year. They had a hard time recruiting teams to come down to Brockton. Counted in one. That's Spillane down low. Away, oh, keeping foul. it interesting. First foul against Marquis Dos Santos. Three point play for Spillane. 18-13, boxes on top by five. Now, Marcinal Louis Charles. Brock. Brock, Brock can go with a pretty big lineup right now with Sonny Okanola and Doherty Glenn down low. Two big bodies, two big football players. Both those young men are being looked at by big time football programs right now. Right. Travel against Sonny Oak and Lola. Got to keep that pivot foot planted in the ground. You can't shuffle it. I've noticed that's an emphasis this season with the referees early on. Down low, number 22 off the glass and in, Ethan Ekstrom. Sean O'Brien getting all the way into the paint. Darius to Louis Charles. Back to Darius, driving baseline. Floater is no good. Rebound is blocked off of the open Lola shot. Now Dos Santos to Louis Charles. Louis Charles with a floater off the glass, no good. It finds Glenn Darty. Loose ball, a scrum away, has it. And Sean O'Brien. Now Dos Santos. Brockton got away with one there. Floater off the glass, no good. Glenn Darty counted in one for Tyshawn Glenn Darty. Tyshawn doing a nice job crashing the boards, playing with some intensity. Brockton's got to step it up here. I think that they believe they would walk in and just dunk on these guys. Covering with a five point lead. Louis Charles tipping the rebound to. It's Gerald. Now, Charles was there by himself. Shot clock off. Brockton has it for the moment. Now Oliver Ames. Oof. Oh my, that's, I think that should have been a foul. I think you're correct. It's getting sloppy out here. 11 seconds now, 10, 20 to 17, three-point edge for the boxers over the Oliver Ames Tigers. Dos Santos down low, driving baseline, three seconds, short jumper is good. Nice shot by Dos Santos. Buzzer sounds, the first quarter has come to an end, 22-17. These two teams fighting for the right to go against Cardinal Spellman in the championship game of this Oliver Ames holiday tournament. Brett, we've seen a couple of action-packed boys games here in the first quarter of this one, no different. Yeah, it's been an exciting half, a quarter so far. I expect it to be exciting the whole game. OA is playing really hard. They're boxing out, they're playing tough defense. They're taking smart shots on offense. And Brockton is getting to the rim when they want. They're taking the shots that they want for the most part, but you know, they're, they're gonna have to work to win this game. They're not just gonna walk in. Now they're at the point in the season where they've had some impressive wins and teams are gunning for them. And 
they are the number five ranked team by the Herald currently. And they've got a target on their back. And they need to know that they have to play like they have a target on their back, just like the Patriots. Every team is a great team. You can't take anyone lightly. So the Patriots signing James Harrison. That was fun. Some believe that there's a little bit of malicious intent there, trying to steal a Steelers playbook or get to know the Steelers defense or what have you. Sloppy play here by Brockton. Away back the other way, this is number 23, Jake Ehrlich. Three for Spillane, no good. I'm head coach Bowen, I'm calling a timeout here. Calming the guys down, saying listen, deep breath, we're not gonna run and gun the whole game, play our game. Yep, that's getting it in the paint. They're not a good shooting team. They go to the hoop well, they post up well, they clean up well when they're rebounding, but they're not rebounding well tonight. Coach Bowen just had the, the, the game break in between quarters. I'd be surprised if he takes a, a timeout anytime soon. He's not a coach that likes to take timeouts either. Nice finish there by O'Brien. O'Brien's a nice player. Marcus Cesar to Juris Harris. Inside for Okinola. Louis Charles for three is good. Nice swing of the ball there. Okinola is a good passer for a big man. Now three for Spillane is good. Spillane's got the hot hand. A little bit of inside knowledge on Spillane. So we got here about 11.30 this morning, set up for these four games. Spillane was here with one of the coaches of Oliver Ames. About an hour working on his jump shot. Nice work down there by Okanola and Doherty Glenn. Hey, the great shooters, they don't just happen. They're made. You want to be a great shooter, a truly great shooter, you have to put up hundreds of shots a day, every day. You can't take a day off. Matt Moyer into the game, the senior captain for she uh, Sean O'Brien. Ooh. They're always going to call that one. Okanola called for the hit. That is now... Five team fouls against the boxers. And always doing what I thought a lot of teams would start doing to Brockton. They're packing it in, they're playing a two, three zone. They're forcing Brockton to shoot. And Brockton's gonna hit a couple jumpers to keep defenses honest and create some space for their big guys down low. If they can get guys like Charles to hit a couple of threes and Maybe a few other people that'll open things up for everybody. Nice steal Therese here. Therese Harrison alone has it swatted from behind. He goes hard into the end boards. Pops up okay. And that is precisely the reason that Bill Matthews told us that we could not have cameras directly under the hoop. <laughs> Poor newbie, we'd have taken out. Newby will be fun. Newby took a ball to the shin earlier. It came from all the way on the other side of the court, just kind of rolled under the table, hit him. Swears he tore his ACL and, <laughs> and sprained his ankle. A basketball? A basketball. They don't hurt that bad, Newby. Harris hits both free throws. Just one. No, both. 29-22 the score. Brockton up by seven. Oliver Ames has played the cleaner game, however. Brockton's got a very interesting lineup out there right now. With Terry, Carpenter, 
and Reed in the front court. Too much mustard on it for Jerice Harris. Love to see the big man overload. Send in Glenn Darty with Eldon Terry. You could do that. And some outside shooters. Navon Reed could go out there and play the two. He's a very talented athlete and basketball player. Part of Reed had a huge game last week against, I believe, Barnstable. He had a huge steal against Marshfield. He had the game-winning shot. It was a buzzer beater. Very exciting play. I got to see it on Twitter. Harris for three is good. That's what they need. They need to hit a couple of those. They have to make OA respect their outside shot to open up the rest of their game. They don't need to be bombing away. They're taking good shots within the offense. Knock down enough just to get them to come out and to give these guys enough space to operate down in the paint. Over to number 33, that is Navon Reed. Reed for three, no good. Nice rebound by Harris. Glenn, uh, Eldon Terry. Terry cleaning up the mess. 34-22, almost halfway through the second quarter. Brockton up by 12, finally starting to play their game. This one around the world and in. Terry's open baseline. There it is, just couldn't finish the shot. Thought he was closer to the basket than he was. I don't think he was expecting that. Spillane the other way. Long two in and out, no good. Ripped down, loose ball. Terry had the ball. You don't Azor see that often. comes up with it. Azor's left, no good. Spillane the rebound. Oh, he wisely slowing it down. They don't want to get into a track meet with Brockton. Brockton's got a pretty good track program. They do. Excellent track program. Beat BC High the other day. I saw that on Twitter. Yeah, that, that was a big win. BC High is an excellent track program. Azor back and forth with Reed. Reed throwing the double team. Back to Azor. Coach John Fidalgo of the Brockton indoor track, men's track team is here tonight along with Coach Matt Campbell of the outdoor men's track team for Brockton High School. Three is good for Jerese Harris. He's got the hot hand for Brockton. Jerese Harris looking good. So the, the question is, what does Matt Campbell not coach? He's involved with football, Hockey. track. <laughs> I've seen him at the rink a few times. He does go to show his support. Matt's from a hockey family. His dad played at UMass Boston. His dad was from Charlestown, so kind of have to play hockey from Charlestown during that time. Oh, he does it all. He coached basketball here, actually, at Oliver Ames. He's an OA alum. Came over to the dark side when he started teaching at West. So who's he rooting for tonight? Oh, he's rooting for us. He's a Brockton guy now. Bought a house in Brockton. It's been He's converted. Azor underhand to Harris. Now in for Abu Kaba down to Terry. Nice pass by Kaba. Terry. Terry's going to go straight up. Terry's Don't not even expecting. dribble it. I've been in Terry's position where you're a big man and people throw you the ball from very strange angles that you're not expecting. You're getting ready for a rebound, and all of a sudden the ball's coming at you. Three for Oliver Ames off the glass, no good. Another Brockton rebound to Abu Kaba with this one. Kaba flying in out of play off of the Tigers. Jalen Lee, Glenn Darty in, Navon Reed and Eldon Terry will take the breather.
Glenn Darty down low. He goes up off the glass and in. Great finish by Glenn Darty. You see a lot more black jerseys in the paint now. Brockton's doing a nice job of concentrating on boxing out. Spinning. Nice move there by number Good. 23, Jake Ehrlich. Ehrlich. Harris for three, no good. Harris is feeling it. Getting a little cold now. Layup, no good. Rebound to Oliver Ames. This one off the glass and in. Noticing Oliver Ames is pulling their big guys on their offense out to the top of the key, drawing Darty Glenn and Terry when he was in there away from the rim. Harris pump fakes, works his way inside, takes a two, no good. Glenn Darty with the rebound, he is fouled by Ehrlich on the way up. Tyshawn's doing a nice job the second quarter, really crashing the boards and cleaning up a lot of the, the missed shots on offense. Not sure if that's good recognition by him or just the way he likes to play. I know he's a good rebounder, but. Gundardi, the wide receiver, had a phenomenal 49 and a half yard reception against the Needham Rockets in the first round of the MIAA playoffs. That was a big one. That was a great game, even though we lost. <laughs> that was a phenomenal game. You hit the extra point at the end of regulation, game over, we move on to get killed by Severian. <laughs> I don't know if they would have got killed. Severian was playing very well. They did Up until lose the ever. title game. Right. Only Proud to say that a public school yes. won the championship. Probably the only time I've ever rooted for Everett, but it was mostly because Kevin Brown, their phenomenal running back, played for me in my middle school team in Dorchester. He's a, he's a great story, Division I football player. Boston isn't producing a lot of Division I football players. It's been a while. Brighton had one last year, uh, but it was the first one in many, many years. We'll always root for a public school Absolutely. over the Catholic Conference. Absolutely. Shot clock is off, a 12-point edge for the boxers, 42 to 30, with now 10 seconds left in the second quarter. Azor hanging off the last shot to Jalen Lee back to Azor. Driving inside, floater off the glass, no good. Nice rebound, rebound Kaba. to Kaba. And his buzzing beater layup is good. 44 to 30 to score at the end of the first half. Brett, that's a lot of points for one half of basketball. It is, it was a fast paced game. A lot of hard fought rebounding and good defense by both teams. But Brockton turned it on there and quickly Built their lead up to 12 for a while and then ended the half at 14. Uh, I think this is the game that we thought we were going to see. That was, it got interesting there for a while, the five-point difference. Oliver Rames hanging in for a little bit before Brockton pulled away. Do you think they come out with a strong second half? I do. I mean, Oliver Rames will come out playing hard and, and doing what they did in the first half. So I, I expect to see a lot of action, very similar action. So. It's 44 to 30 at the end of the first half. The Brockton Boxers leading the Oliver Rams Tigers in the second game of the opening night here at Oliver Rams Holiday Tournament. Brockton 44, Oliver Rams 30 at halftime. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly, everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize, 
you feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Oliver Ames High School for second half action between your Brockton Boxers and the Oliver Ames Tigers in game four today of the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. The winner of this game goes on to face the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals who defeated the South Boston Knights. Abu Carpenter started off the game with a, of the half with a nice layup. Extending the lead to 16. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside special guest commentator Brett Gormley. Brett, we almost have to put you on payroll. <laughs> almost. I'll take a gift card to Texas Roadhouse. Might have to happen. <laughs> we'll send that to our production truck, see if they can pull it off. It's a 16 point lead for the boxers. Make it 18 as Eldon Terry down low. Timeout by Oliver Ames, 51 seconds into the third quarter. That's how Brockton's gonna win this game. If they can get the size in the paint working, they're gonna free up the outside shooters and they're just gonna dominate. Yeah, that's what's happened the second quarter and now just a few minutes into the third quarter. Brockton's gone baseline twice, dished it off to the bigs and got an easy bucket. It seems to be going Brockton's way. Oway can hang for a little while, but eventually the size and athleticism of Brockton is going to win out. That's my prediction. Packed house for this game shaping up almost exactly how we thought it was going to. Dr. Murray in the house along with Matt Campbell. Marcel Smith. legends, Brockton High legends. Shout out to the referee for handling our cable for us. <laughs> Got Peter Harris, one of the greatest running backs in the history of Brockton High School. Super Bowl champion, 1996. Rushed for 400 yards against Zavarian. His career highlight, played at Northeastern. Randy Wilson, his teammate and great friend. Great linebacker and running back for Brockton High School. Also on that 96 championship team along with his brother, Renard Wilson, who won a state championship on the baseball team as a sophomore. Back in the glory days, Brockton High Athletics. This is Jack Spillane, the senior captain at the line. Good on his first attempt. Blaine is an excellent shooter. Very impressed with the way he shoots the ball. Azor to Jalen Lee driving baseline off the glass, has it blocked. OA back the other way. Pump fake for number 12, Matt Muir. Ooh, that was definitely tipped. Should be OA ball. And it is.
Ooh, Down nice low, block. it's swatted by Jalen Lee. You now it's Azor laying it up, counted in one for Marcus Azor. Really nice finish there by Azor with the left hand. We've been saying this seems like for three years now. Marcus Azor put some weight on, <laughs> gained some muscle in his arms. He could be, I mean, he's good now, but he could be absolutely phenomenal. That's what they said about me, Matt. And eventually it happened. Hopefully for Azor, he puts on some weight in college. Definitely see him playing college basketball. Very skilled player. Jace Harris ripping it down. No over the back call. Loose ball now. This well, The refs are really letting these guys play. A foul is Jace Harris is tangled up. Eldon Terry gets up a little bit gingerly. The action is right in front of us, Matt. And I saw about four fouls there. The question, the question was not if they're going to blow the whistle. The question <laughs> is when they're yeah, going right. to blow the whistle. But that's the way I like it. Good physical contest. Let the guys Let play. Let the boys play. Work off some steam after Christmas dinner. Oh. I'm sure that they all eat well. A three is Eldon Terry got in the face. That's a freight train that nobody wants to be standing in front of. Yeah, that's going to make you think twice. Oh, Terry almost with a sensational jam. But lost it on the way up. That's what I want to see before we get out of here. Saw one dunk early. It's a few more. We saw one. three in the first half against Barnstable. the first game of the year, Barnstable. Yeah. I don't recall seeing that in a long time in the first half of a Brockton game. You see him in blowouts at the end of the game. Always used to be the staple of the, the Rotary Tournament. That's the one game that we would be able to see a couple of dunks. Yes. I always have some really good teams come through there. Abukawa on the inside overhead to Jalen Lee. Lee is good. Lee is an unheralded player on this team. You hear about the big guys a lot, but Lee's showing me something tonight. Except for the defensive communication there. Or lack thereof. He's over the nice move to get through that double team. His shot is good, 55 to 34 the score. Brockton up by 21. Winner of this game going up against Cardinal Spellman Friday night at 7.30 here at Oliver Ames as Azor converts another layup. Brockton does pull this out. That'll be a fun game to watch. I was All Brockton final. Yes. And his impartial media members of Brockton. Yes, I'm not, I won't be impartial. I will never root for Cardinal Spellman. Our director, Paul Mandeville, an alumnus of Cardinal Spellman. So after the Spellman Cardinals blew out South, or not really blew out, but could, should have blown out yep. South Boston, said that's enough. I'm not staying for the Brockton game. <laughs> Too fired up about the Spellman when I'm out of here. That was a good game. I, I was happy to see actually two of my former students on the Southie High team. They both played significant minutes. Harris, wide open three, good. Harris picking up where he left off in the first half. This team is getting away from Oliver Ames. Timeout by Oliver Ames, 60 to 37. The score, Brockton running away with it. Looks like a few folks have had enough. I see former AD John Booten with his coat. And George Sylvester, who's a coach of many of these guys when they're young. It's like he's taken off. The All for Ames fan section has been pretty quiet for a while. Yeah, they haven't had much to cheer about. Maybe they should start cheering for Brockton. I'm willing to bet a few of those folks up there, their parents are from Brockton. Halfway almost through the third quarter, Brockton up by 23 and gaining. Line 
lineup change here. Terry out. Darty Glenn in, or Glenn Darty in. Abu Carpenter back in the game along with Navon Reed. A three from way downtown. I think I was spilling the chart. I couldn't see it through all the traffic. Whistle stoppage. Not sure why. Away going with a little three-quarter court pressure. Brockton not breaking it the way that they should be. It's playing on the outside, stopping, popping, three, no good. Nice tip there by Darty Glenn. All the way into Jerice Harris, missing the layup. Navon Reed. Navon Reed was there to clean up the loose garbage. Navon Reed is a what I would call a legacy player. Brothers, Johnny and Gerard, Bubba Shelby, both played football, had great careers here at Brock and I, went on to play in college. And his uncle, Mike Shelby, is regarded as one of the greatest players to ever play for Brock and High School on the 85 championship team. So 85 was just, Brockton dominates everything. That was, yeah. They won a Super Bowl that year. <laughs> Amazing players on that team. Greg McMurtry was on that team. Got a basketball title, football yep. title. Yeah. Yeah, if you went to Brockton High from the 80s, 1980 to, I would say, 96, if you played football, you were guaranteed a Super Bowl championship. Nice block. No soup Sonny for you. Opanola. The track team won much more than the football team. If you go into the, into the gym and count all the flags, which I did the other day, there's quite a few more. Spillane, three, no good front of the rim. Dos Santos with the rebound, quickly up to Azor. Azor oh. throws it down! The six-footer showing he can hang with the big boys. Azor, that was impressive. Not only was it a dunk, it was a one-handed jam. I didn't think he had it in him. I think that's an open challenge to Glenn Doherty and Eldon Terry from the little guy saying, hey, if I can do it, let's get something going here. Yeah, he wanted to get his, son, his little piece of the pet action here. See the Spelman players sitting in the stands. They definitely sat up and took notice of that. Well, Brockton's going to have a much tougher matchup if they make it out of this game to the championship. Well, the key to that game, Brockton Spellman, Spellman committing, like seriously, this is not even no like an over exaggeration. Like actually committed about 28 fouls in the last game. It was not a clean game. This game's going by much smoother. They stopped the team foul counter at 10. Yeah. But before they realized they had to bring it back down to 10, there was about 13 on there in the first half. De Santos And a three for Dos Santos. Nice corner three there. Sonny Okanola almost took the life of an Alvarez guard. A three, no good off the back of the rim. Ogan Lola with the rebound. Our number 10's Marcus getting very physical Azor. here with Sonny Okanola. Avon Reed came flying in. This is out of play. Stopped by Bill Matthews, the AD of Oliver Ames. Very helpful. Shout out to Mr. Matthews in the Oliver Ames Athletic Department. They paved a little parking lot here for us. They did. I didn't know that. They said, you're going to park out your truck so right by this door. Viewers at home don't need to know that I didn't realize that it was paved just for us, so I parked on a patch of grass. <laughs> well, if you ever come here during the spring, there's a lot of going on. I, I've seen folks parking on the grass, the grass here. Not a ton of parking here. They did a nice job doing this little section of the school over. The gym is beautiful. It's much nicer than their old gym. So I've Auditorium. Played it a few times. It's phenomenal. Is it? I haven't been in there yet. Part of that $18 million, call it a renovation. Yep. Now, what, 
what's interesting here is Coach Bowen never, ever allowed us to not get the ball to the middle on a press like that. Sideline, middle, sideline. That's how Coach Bowen taught us. I think he's, he's changing his philosophy in his old age. Reed with a couple of his own rebounds. Brock Darty fouled on the way up. Working hard here on the glass, but can't seem to put it away. See the fair basketball coach here, former Brockton resident, Brandon Odom. Looks like he's scouting a few of the Brockton High players. Brockton's had some great successes the last few years with former basketball players. Of course, Morgan Thatcher down at Fairfield. Taryn Johnson to Fairfield. Taryn Johnson. Morgan, say Morgan Thatcher was at Stonehill. Yeah, I think she's up back up at UNH catch. now. Yeah, Taryn uh, had a nice little run at Massasoit as the head coach. And then she went back to her alma mater of Fairfield, where she's a thousand point scorer there, as she was at Brock and I. I had the uh, pleasure of coaching her for two summers when she was there at Brock and I. Great player. One of the most talented players I've ever coached. Played uh, pro basketball in Europe for a few years. And I was <coughs> coincidentally at the Hall of Fame induction when she was there. Uh, for I went to go with the family of Tom Johnson, who was my neighbor growing up. He was posthumously inducted. He was a two year captain, Brockton High, three year starter, class of 88 football team. One of the greatest linebackers in the history of the school. Went to Colgate. Iraq War veteran, was a Marine. He passed away at a young age. And um, they inducted him that night, along with Taryn Johnson and Morgan Thatcher, who played on the same basketball team as Brock and I. I think that was the team that got to Worcester and then fell. So Taryn graduated the year before they went to um, the Garden. It was uh, S Sabri, Rodriguez, Shannon Singletary, Beatrice Atkinson, Morgan Thatcher was a junior on that team, I believe. Um, they were good. They were a really good group of, of players. Great group of kids. I really enjoyed being around them. And they, they played fast pace. The way I, the way I love the coach. Press and run. Buzzer sounds and the third quarter has come to an end. It is 71 to 47. Brockton on top and they are up big. You can pretty much write this one off, Brett. It'll be Spellman versus the Boxers in the title game here at the Oliver Hames Holiday Tournament. What can we look forward to in that matchup? Well, both teams have good big men. Uh, Farrier, I was impressed with for Spellman. Uh, number 10 for Spellman, Mike Spencer, I was impressed with. Uh, Admar Jeremillo, I was very impressed with their point guard. He's a heck of a player. Uh, so those guys, they they will definitely present some challenges for Brockton, but you know, if I had to make a, make a choice, I would definitely take Brockton for the win there. Be a good matchup. Objectively, Both teams have man. size. I'm very objective on that one. Both <laughs> teams have the size. Some shooting ability. It'll be yep. John Marillo versus probably Marcus Azor will be the matchup to watch in that one. Yeah, definitely. The three and corner I, is good. I'd say Doherty, uh, Glenn, or Glenn Doherty and Terry on Faria will be interesting. Avon Reed for three, no good. Oak and Lola with the rebound. Down low to Glenn Darty. He thought about the dunk. 
didn't quite have enough height to get up there. Okinawa is a very good passer. One thing I've noticed about him over the last few years, had a chance to see him play a few times. Sees the floor very well. Good touch on the ball. 73 to 50 now the score. I don't see a ton of big guys that can spin the ball on a bounce pass or have a nice soft touch on a pass like that right there. With this break in the action, want to thank the cast and crew for today's game four festivities. At the helm, the leader of our fearless ship, Aaron Tebow, the prolific cinematographer. Next to him, we have Anna Kutz, graphics, audio, replay. Inside the nice warm gym, we have Katya Andrade and the seven time award winning director and producer Emmy nominated those are just stats and numbers they don't mean anything newbie Rato shout out to the sucker I mean very helpful people that Ooh. stayed with us through all four games as Okinola rips down with it wow Katya Andrade Anna Kutz hanging with us all day Lucky Four them. games. Lucky them. Four games. And poor Anna's had to listen to me banter on and on and on about basketball for the last six and a half hours. That poor woman. Folks at home can't see this, but Nubi actually wears his Emmy around his neck on a big gold yes. chain. He's actually, he's got a little wagon, like one of those <laughs> Red Rider, the old school wagons, and he's... He wears it attached to his waist and he carries all of his trophies around with him. He calls it the newbie bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> He's also, it's like a turnover chain for Miami. That's kind of what it looks like. Trying to get the coaches at Brockton High to have a turnover chain. One of my favorite things about this college football season was the Miami the turnover Miami chain. The Miami turnover chain. And the song. This is quite the sight to see Newbie pacing up and down the baseline with all seven of his trophies <laughs> right, behind, right behind him. It's pretty loud. I don't know if you folks at home can hear it. Kind of sounds like Santa. Ooh. Glenn Darty says no soup for you. No soup for you. No finger wag. Oh, Sonny. Oh, heads up. Yes, we wanted a bunch of cups at our feet. Sonny's going to be careful. He's going to hurt somebody. Well, we had Mike Spencer at the beginning of the last game, the senior center for the Cardinals, came barreling and sliding into the base of our table. Ooh. Another block, this one, Eldon Terry. Lou Charles token Lola. Travel. Short two for Darius is good. Nice shot by Darius. Good shuffle his feet there. In a game this this is that's such a blow, and I think the refs will let you, some of these things go. I would personally vote for a running clock for the next five and a half minutes. I'm with you. Hopefully getting home before. It drops to negative degrees outside. That was disappointing looking at the weather earlier in the week. It's hoping for maybe a 30, 40 degree day. It's sad you have to hope for that. It's, you know, it makes me want to move to Florida. The rest of the year I'm fine. It is 75 to 53, Brockton on top. I don't know if Brockton will be invited back to this tournament next year. I always said the Brockton Rotary Tournament was going to end the year that Brockton lost. And they did. And they got <laughs> blown out by a very good BC High team last year. Yep. Now up by 20 of the boxers, 75 to 55. On top of the Oliver Ames Tigers. 
The three for Oak and Lola, no good. OA with the rebound. Terry with another rebound. This is Darius one-handing it to Jalen Lee. His three is good. Nice shot by Lee. Seventy-eight to fifty-five now. The score. Well, I've been looking for a few shooters to emerge on this team. I definitely would say that um, Harris and Lee have stood out to me today. That's something that they need to get out of this team consistently, out of their backcourt. They need to get some shooters. We're now going to see number twenty-five, Isaiah Oresti, six-three junior, in for Eldon Terry. And Lola ripping down the rebound. 78-57 now, Brockton on top. It's lead down low to Louis Charles. Louis Charles fouled on his way in. Of course, on the list of crew, we forgot to mention, you're listening to the sultry sounds of myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, and your Ward 4 School Committee representative, Brett Gormley. I need a cool nickname like you. What, Ward 4 School Committee representative isn't cool? It's a little wordy. We'll come up with something. Hitman. <laughs> Put the figure four on him. Well, we were, last game decided to dub Jerry's Harris the assassin. Oh, well, he's been a sharpshooter tonight, that's for sure. Of course, we told his mother this after the game, and she says, whatever you do, do not tell him it'll go to his head. <laughs> He'll brag about it. He'll make all of us call him that. So we said, well, we're going to refer to him as the assassin during a game, and well, he's going to hear it. This is the first time you've said it, so I don't think it's sticking. It hasn't stuck yet. So this was at the end of the last game. We dubbed him the assassin. He knocked down like three or four threes in the second half. He hasn't had a huge game yet. He started off strong tonight. He hit them when, he ne when they needed him to. The two from the charity stripe for Spillane is good. Oak and Lola pump fake. Now down to the corner for Louis Charles to Azor. Azor along two, no good. Ooh. Louis Charles trying to grab the rebound and slam it down. Trying to join in on the fun. Down low off the glass, no good around the rim. On these games, haven't played in these games. When these are their blowouts and one guy gets a dunk on a breakaway, then it becomes a competition. Louis Charles for three, no good. It's always tough for the big guys like me. We're never out on the perimeter getting those steals. Time out from Oliver Ames, coach Don Byron. 79 to 61, the score. Brockton is up by 18, 241 to go in the fourth. Run down the full slate of upcoming games tomorrow night. It will be the Brockton Boxers. And already lost track. <laughs> One sec. It'll be the Brockton Boxers and the Oliver Ames Tigers in the consolation game. And then Needham will take on Walpole in those games tomorrow night. On Friday night, it'll be the Oliver Ames Tigers and the South Boston Knights in the consolation game. 
And then an all Brockton final. The Brockton Boxers and the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals. Consolation games each start at six. Championships at 7.30. Azor comes up with the steal up ahead, trying to find Oresti. No good. They still have him finished by Azor. Whole team's still out here plugging away. Azor at the line. Three points the old-fashioned way, no good. Oresti loses it. Number four, Ralph Derulis is in the game. I believe he's a cousin of senior football captain, Brock and I, Nate Derulis. And former, oh, nice block. Lee comes up with the Jaylen block. Lee. Jonathan somewhere in that Jonathan, chair as well? That's where I was getting it. Jonathan Derulis, former. New England champion in the 100, currently playing football at the and University And phenomenal of running back. Very good, he was more of a wing back. Well, three for number the, 24, the Michael Green. The golden-haired assassin, Michael Green. The golden-haired assassin, love it. Never say die, it's 81-64. A block committed by number 11. Marquise Dos Santos. And that puts Brandon Osborne at the line. One and one shooting situation. No good on his second attempt. Didn't hit the rim. Didn't hit the rim, so. Gotta hit the rim. Takes over on downs. Cut there by number 24. Osborne off the glass and in. Dos Santos fouled. Hold against Mark Bissonette. One oh eight to go in the fourth quarter. It's eighty two sixty seven. Brockton on top by fifteen. Only cutting in the lead a little bit. With some dour faces on the bench. Always oh, still flying around. Get the scrappy bench guys out there trying to earn some time. Nice finish Coming by Isaiah Aresti. Aresti on the board. Aresti is a broad young man. 84 to 67, the score brought it on top. Under a minute to go, 45 seconds. Louis Charles with the rebound. Dos Santos down low, a putback attempt by Darius is no good. 
Dos Santos comes up with a steal. Just between two Tigers. 30 seconds left, a three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Louis Charles over to Darius, down low for Dos Santos. I don't know whether Louis Charles got a tip on that or not, but now it's Michael Green, the golden haired assassin. <laughs> and a three for Osborne is good. Buzzer sounds, and this one has come to an end. A 14-point victory for the Brockton Boxers. 84-70, to 70, your final score, Brett. An encouraging game. Uh, we saw a lot of things we liked from the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, Brockton finally showed a little bit li of life beyond the arc. It was good to see um, Harris knock down a few threes and a few other guys step up and knock down threes. That's going to be huge for this team going forward. Well, Brockton... Show the force of its big men. Eldon Terry, Tejon Glenn Darty, and Sonny Oak and Lola, the three men tandem in the paint, shutting it down for the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, and that's what you expect out of this team. You expect them to pound the glass, get a lot of offensive rebounds, post up. They're going to see a lot of 2 3 zones, so they played it well. There was some good high low action, getting the ball down to Terry from the uh, foul line. So, not bad. I'm impressed. You got to keep it going. Hype us for the Spellman and Boxer final. That's going to be a fun game. You know, a lot of these guys, I see a lot of Brockton's on the roster for Spellman as it sits in front of us. Uh, I know these guys played it with each other growing up. I'm sure they play AAU together still. And uh, you'll see a very heated contest, I believe. Uh, battle for the pride of the city on Friday night here at All Marines at 730. Should be a fun one. Your final, 84 to 70. The Brockton Boxers move on to take on Cardinal Spellman in the title. Oliver Ames falls, and they will face South Boston in the consolation game. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, my broadcast partner, Brett Gormley, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We will see you next game.